Hey YouTube, Further73 here with yet another video. It's been a while, so I'm just going like gangbusters, making up for lost time. Smoking my Stanwell with some Larry's Blend from Hearth and Home. And what I'm going to do this evening is I am going to walk you through a state pipe restoration. It's a little pipe I picked up at a flea market. It's a Chacombe Villiard. Billiard, I'm sorry. See a little CC logo, and I may or may not be able to pick up the stamping right there. Right there on the shank. It's got some nice bird's eye grain on the bowl here. It's got a couple fills in it, which I'm not a big fan of, but uh, if you look here on the, on the heel of the bowl right in there, there's a, there's a bit of a putty fill. And I think there's another one, yeah, right here on the side of the bowl. We got another one right there. There you can see it showing up in the glare. I am not a big fan of fills on a pipe. I like the grain, I like the natural look of the wood, I like rusticated pipes and sandblasted pipes as well, but I'm not a big fan of fills. I haven't decided how I'm going to tackle that. There's a couple ways you can get a pipe like this that's got a fill in it. There's a couple ways you can deal with that, but I'm not going to get into that right now. What I'm going to worry about today in this video is this stem. This pipe I purchased at a flea market, paid about eight bucks for it. It's barely been smoked. If you look inside the bowl there, see if I can get the light just right. Ooh, make you dizzy. Yeah, there you go. Kind of see in there that, uh, ah, there, see right in there? That's bare wood at the bottom. This thing's barely been smoked at all. Twist it off here. Look at that. I've done nothing to this pipe. Look how clean that is. You can see. Look at that. You can see right through the stem. See the light coming through there? This thing was barely smoked at all. Shank's in good shape. It's pretty clean in there. So, you get an oxidized stem. How do you deal with that? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. A lot of guys will say soak it in bleach. and I've tried that and it does work. The problem is, if you don't have a good high-grade vulcanite, you'll get pits and you're going to sand it anyway. And regardless of whether it's a high-quality ebonite vulcanite stem or a little lesser quality stem, you're still going to rough it up. It's going to be dull and you've got to polish it anyway. So what I like to do is I will start out with the pipe just as you see it here. And what I like to do is I'll mask off the shank. You want to leave, you want to leave the stem on the stummel when you start this process because if you look right there you see how nice that fits together there's no gap right here it's the same diameter it's a nice smooth transition if you separate these two and you start working on them and you start sanding on this thing you're going to roll that edge and you'll end up rolling this edge in the cleaning and, and polishing process then when you put it back together it's going to come together and you're going to have a you're going to have a little valley just like that like my hands are here it's exaggerated but that's what it'll look like so i'm going to show you how to avoid that we'll get started we'll be right back all right i've gathered a couple things up and i'm back so here's what we're going to do first thing we're going to do we're going to start with some painter's masking tape and this is this is like the two inch wide stuff three-quarter or whatever what I like to do what I start with is uh, I adjust the camera so you can see me better what I do I'll take the, the nice factory cut edge here and I'll put this guy around the stumble right along the seam here where the shank and the stem come together You may have to use a couple pieces to account for the compound curves where you end up with overlaps. But you put that guy on there like that. And what this is going to do is this is going to protect the stain on your stumble and keep you from sanding away at that because we're going to start with a fairly aggressive sandpaper to get this nasty old oxidation off. If you look, that stem's brown. When I'm done with this thing, it'll be jet black. It'll be nice and black and dark just like this one. 
this one started out like that. What I do, start out with some automotive wet dry sandpaper. I generally start out with a, a 400 grit. Now if the thing's really bad, you can, you can start, I mean if you've got some really serious chew marks, and you want to just kind of clean them up or you need to reshape the, the button here a little bit, start with like 150 or 220, but 400 is a good place to start. And you just, you just work it. And uh, don't worry about the logo, you'll clean it up too. This one happens to be, I believe, a little bit of an aluminum inlay there, and you can see it's already starting to shine. And just work it right up to, right up to that masking tape, and work around it, all the way around. Just like so. You keep working that until you get the whole stem to where it looks like this and just a little blacker. So I'm going to work on that and I'll be right back. Alright, now I've spent about five minutes, give or take, with some 400 grit sandpaper on that stem and now you can see it's black again. To get the same effect with bleach, you're going to have to let it soak for probably an hour. You're going to have to wrench and scrub and clean and then you're going to be left with a stem that's not as smooth as this is right now and you're going to have to do what I just did and sand it anyway so why not save some time and just use a little elbow grease. And you can see right up here where all that nasty oxidation was by the button, look at that, cleaned it right up. Now it was a little, uh, the oxidation was a little thicker right there, a little more involved so I took a little bit of 150 grit and just cleaned it up right around the button a little bit and went back with the 400. What I'll do now is I'm going to progress through the grits. I'm going to hit it with 600, then 800, and then I will probably finish up with a 1000 grit little 3M micro mesh pad. And I'll use this with a little bit of water. And when I'm done with that, we'll head over to the buffer. So I'm going to take some time, put another 10 or 15 minutes into this stem, at the buffer. Hey guys, I'm back. I've spent a few minutes with this guy. I finished up on the stem with that, that pad I showed you. I went one step farther that I didn't tell you about. I sprayed the whole thing down with some bottled water, just regular old tap water. And I took some 2000 grit sandpaper, which really almost feels like notebook paper in its grit and I kind of went over the whole pipe and what that does is it just kind of cleans some of the grunge and dirt off of there you can see the bowl's got a little more sheen to it there's that hideous pit I haven't decided what I'm going to do with yet it may take your suggestions we can either rusticate or maybe do an epoxy fill but anyway I'm over here at the buffer so I'm going to start this guy up I got my safety glasses because you know safety third I'm going to fire this thing up put a little quick polish on this pipe and you'll see what we got. I've started out with some red rouge and uh, I've just got the one buffer and the two wheels. I do all my cleanup polish on this wheel and I do all my waxing on the other wheels. So take a little wire brush here, clean some of that stuff off and move on to some white diamond. Okay, I'm back. Now I've polished this on the buffer. I did the whole pipe with some white diamond. And you can see it brought out a real nice shine on it. That logo cleaned up. 
You got the oxidation off of the stem. The bowl's even shiny, and the rim looks good again. So I'm gonna come over here on this other wheel. I'm gonna hit it with uh, some Carnuba wax, the solid block. Got this from uh, Vermont Freehand's eBay store. Good guy, check him out. Got a lot of good stuff. But anyway, I'm gonna hit this, and we'll finish this up. Always do it twice, sometimes three times. That's it. I'm going to hit it with a soft cloth and I'll see you back over at the bench. All right, I'm back over here at the bench and here's the pipe. I've spent a total of lap time about a half an hour. And you can see the rim cleaned up, it's shiny. We've got two coats of carnauba wax on there. The stem is just as black as night just like it should be. No more oxidation. And uh, that's that. The only other thing I'm gonna do to this pipe is I've got uh, a little bit of Everclear, pure grain alcohol. This is, uh, I think it's about 180 proof. It's, it's like, it's wicked strong. You don't chug this stuff, believe me. And you probably shouldn't have it around open flame because it'll, it'll flat burn. But anyway, what I'll do, Take a regular Q-tip dipped in Everclear, and since this since this pipe has been very light, lightly smoked, and it really doesn't even smell like tobacco, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to swab the inside of this bowl. So you can see that. Just swab the inside of the bowl here with Everclear on a Q-tip. Yeah, you see it came out a little black, but I mean you could still see bare wood inside this bowl, so it's not bad at all. I'll do that. That takes care of the bowl. And I'm gonna do the same thing with some with some regular pipe cleaners. I'll just uh, I'll dip a couple pipe cleaners in alcohol. Once again, I prefer now let me back up just a little bit. When I say alcohol, you'll see some guys talk about denatured. I don't recommend it. You can't drink it. If you drink it, you'll go blind. Do not use denatured alcohol inside the pipe. A lot of guys also say isopropyl alcohol, same thing. It's methyl alcohol, it's not ethyl alcohol. You can drink ethyl, it's good. Just remember, for good time, call ethyl. You don't want any methyl. My personal opinion, and that's all it is, I don't have any training or anything to back it up, I'm not gonna use anything on that pipe that I can't put in my mouth. If I can't eat it or drink it, it's not going in my pipe. So. That's why I use the Everclear. Bacardi 151 works really well too, and it actually give it a little bit of a rum flavor. But I see by the time I'm running out, so before it cuts me off, I'm gonna say uh, good night, sweet smokes. I'm gonna swab it with some Everclear, give it about an hour to dry, and try this baby out. So, take care everybody, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and we'll see you next time.